Hello and welcome to Views from the Market, Mid-Market M&A in Private Equity. I'm your host, Mario Negro, a partner in the Private Equity M&A Group at Steichman Elliott. Today's special guest is uh, Mark McPherson. Mark is the co-founder and partner of Argyle Capital Partners. Um, Argyle is a Toronto-based uh, private equity fund that uh, has done a number of deals over the last few years. And I think what makes Argyle unique is uh, they um, focus on the lower middle market and they raise their capital for each deal um, um, uniquely so that they get different partners, uh, different investment partners for each deal. And uh, Mark and his, uh, his partners have been super successful in the marketplace. We're excited to have you join us for today's uh, talk. Mark, I thought I'd uh, just give you a chance to introduce yourself, introduce Argyle. Tell us a little bit about what you're, you've been doing, uh, especially during this uh, COVID environment. Well, that, that's uh, that's a great intro, Mario. Thanks. I uh, I certainly feel uh, very important after that intro. Um, I don't even know where to go from here. I mean, I shouldn't I shouldn't say anything about myself because you know it's already it's already been articulated so well. Um, yeah, look, it's uh, it's uh, it's been a uh, it's been an interesting ride the last little while. I uh, I would say um, when when COVID hit, um, you know we. We quickly looked at uh, the portfolio, and and I guess you know maybe taking a step back, we the types of businesses we invest in are, um, you know, now that we look back at COVID, uh, seemed to back test well for a, a global pandemic, and that was uh, completely by accident, of course. But um, you know, we do focus on uh, businesses that are in basic industries, uh, old economy, you know, stuff like steel distribution industrial products, manufacturing, distribution, that sort of thing. Stuff that doesn't, uh, doesn't necessarily go away over time or, uh, you know, can't be uh, become obsolete, uh, but is not super interesting. Um, I mean, it's interesting to us, of course, but it's not interesting to, it's not as, you know, uh, as, you know, interesting to folks uh, in institutional uh, money management as, you know, healthcare or tech or software or, or that sort of thing. Uh, that's where we find our. Um, that's where we find our. What interests us. And, and Mark, can I ask you, you're, you've done a great job of building relationship with investors, and and you know obviously you've done multiple deals. What what can I ask you? What what do you focus on in terms of your relationship with investors? Because obviously your model is an ongoing um, relationship with investors. Uh, you know, I hate to say what your secret sauce is, but how do you how do you look at your relationship with investors? And you know, I'd love, love to hear more about how that works and how they interact with you when it comes to deal flow. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, I think for you know, as you pointed out, Mario, each deal we do is financed independently, and we have some pretty good overlap with uh, some core investors that that come into all of our deals, but. What we try to do is we, you know, when we when we find an opportunity uh, that's in a particular industry, we try to find a partner who understands that industry and to find a partner who can add value, you know, operationally. And, and I don't mean like going to site every day and rolling up their sleeves, but, you know, having some expertise or some experience in the past of, uh, of dealing with uh, this, you know, this industry or this business uh, to give us some extra insight or a leg up, um, as we, as we, you know, structure and, and diligence and close the deal, but also afterwards as we own the company and we try to manage through uh, the transition and try to, you know, grow the business and that sort of thing. It's, it, it's beneficial to us to have um, investors who have that expertise in some shape or form. And um, Mark, obviously the last year and a half is a completely different environment uh, for us all when it comes to deal flow. Uh, what's your experience been like? I mean, have you been active over the last year, year and a half? What have you been seeing in the marketplace? We'd love to get your perspective on deal flow activity, what you've been doing and, and how you found deal flow and activity during this COVID period. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, everyone will have this, have this similar experience, but when, you know, when COVID first hit last spring, deal flow dried up pretty quickly as everybody was, you know, trying to figure out, uh, what they were going to do to manage through this. And, you know, I think a lot of sell side advisors thought it would be difficult to go to market with a company uh, that was either, you know, 
doing really well through COVID or, or conversely not doing that well through COVID. So there was a bit of a wait and see for a few months there. And then a whole flood of stuff came in the fall, uh, which, which was interesting, probably had more opportunities flying across our desks than we had seen in quite some time. Uh, and then, you know, in recent months, again, it slowed down again. And I, I think it's just a, f a factor of a lot of supply got out into the market uh, in the fall. Um, but things are a little, you know, things are a little slower right now, it seems, um, for new, new deals coming up. I think, you know, everyone's gotten comfortable with the fact that we're, you know, in a, we're in a, in a, a strange time, but you got to get on with life and, uh, and, you know, owners want to exit. Um, you know, buyers want to buy. So it's, uh, you know, it's getting back to normal, I would say. And, and Mark, I mean, investors are still interested in investing like other in terms of market players, you're seeing investors still active banks lending um, are market player any any differences you've seen in terms of the market players that you rely on for for deals? No, I think, um, I think the the investor base that we partner with, um, you know, they're allocated um, to lots of other asset classes and, uh, and, you know, they're, when they look at the, you know, the stock markets and they look at other markets that, that, that you know, may or may not be frothy uh, right now, uh, they still really like the idea of this sort of asset allocation to the small, uh, the lower middle market, um, the, you know, the, uh, that, that space of company that we look in. And that we look to the industrial products um, type type businesses, ones that they easily understand and uh, where the valuations are not overly rich. And I think that's the key is, you know, uh, you can buy, you know, similar companies to what we're looking at in the public markets, but you're, you're, you're paying a much higher multiple for them than what we can, what we can deliver uh, through, through the structure uh, and the, and the companies that we find. So I think you're seeing, there's still there's still quite a bit of interest from investors out there. I think you know um, there's a lot of capital. It feels like uh, in in many different pockets out there, and I, I I don't think I don't think it's retracted much at all. In fact, uh, maybe even the other way, given given the frothiness that we're seeing in public markets. And Mark, I mean, you you've been doing deals during COVID, and you know you you you've uh, you've closed uh, for my, at least one deal. Um, I mean, have you found anything unique about the, the the kind of deal closing experience or the the deal process have you done more diligence have you uh, you know obviously people talk about earnouts more and and contingency in terms of their purchase have, have you changed the way you evaluate deals during this time have you been looking at deals a little bit differently given the context of the times that we're in um yes and no i would say you know yes uh, you know uh, when you when you meet a company or a management team or a group, uh, it, it's much harder to build that rapport in the early days because you're not um, you know you're doing a lot of calls, you're not necessarily physically in their boardroom, that sort of thing. And and even when you are, you know, handshaking is not uh, not a thing anymore, which is always kind of odd, uh, you know, when you're in those circumstances. But um, you know, it's and when you think about you know the particular business, there's certain things you have to, you know, adjust for, whether it's been, you know, the, the government support on the income statement or, you know, uh, employee costs changing because of, you know, because of anything that COVID has caused. But I think, um, I think once you, once you manage through that, uh, it's really not completely different. Um, the banks are very supportive. Um, uh, we're, we're not big users of earnouts in any case. I think it's, um, not that there's anything wrong with that structure. I think it's a, it's a tough one. Um, it's a tough one to, you know, agree upon down the road we feel, and uh, it's good to have a, a much cleaner deal up front. So we, we don't use a lot of burnouts in any case, but I'll, although I could see the value of those in times like this, um, it, it just wouldn't be a, an approach we would take. Um, you know, I think we, we believed value valuations would correct a bit and come down, but I don't think that that's happening. Uh, again, I think it's because of uh, the surplus of capital that's in the market and the number of participants that are entering the market uh, and looking at ideas and looking at companies. I think uh, valuations are still, you know, holding 
well through this to this period, which is really interesting. Well, I was going to ask you about that, Mark, because you know what's interesting about your fund is you know you. I mean, your partners, you were all professionals. You were, you were in the deal environment in different roles before you started ARCA. You decided to uh, start a fund. You didn't uh, raise a committed fund. You decided to go a deal-by-deal deal approach in terms of raising capital and finding deals. And it's worked out, uh, you know, well for you and that you're on to, you know, you've done multiple deals. But what's interesting is, um, you know, your model is becoming uh, it appears to be more and more popular. And I wanted to get a sense from you in terms of the evolution of the space over the years that you've uh, been doing and working this model and, and what, you know, where you, where you see this model now. And, 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 and if you're noticing what I'm noticing is more and more people are kind of wanting to do what Argyle is and what it means for the marketplace going forward. Yeah, no, that's, that, that's interesting. Um, I, I would say, you know, when we got started, um, a, a very good uh, client of ours um, in our former lives told us, you know, don't worry about raising money. Just go and find a good deal or two and you'll be able to find the capital for it, no problem. And, you know, that was sort of our philosophy as well. Uh, so we went out and we did find a good deal and we found another good deal and, and, um, and we did find the capital for it. Um, I, think, I think many people... Um, you know, feel like they need to raise a fund and go and, and do that first. And, and it feels like, to, it felt like to us at the time, and even still, uh, I mean, we we're just a couple of investment bankers who was going to go and give us, you know, uh, you know, 20 or 30 or 50 or a hundred million dollars. Um, it didn't seem like the smart thing to spend time on. Uh, we wanted to spend time, you know, getting into this and, uh, and, and getting going and trying to figure out how we could create value in these in these companies that we that we partner with, so we kind of did it backwards, and uh, and it was tough in the in the early days trying to find um, find that capital. That that client I mentioned that told us that the capital would come to the deal, he, you know, he never did return our call. So um, we uh, we had to we we had, we had to build some reputation and find the right people, and I think that took a long time. Um, you know, uh, it took a long time to find the right partners out of, out there to to uh, to partner with and 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 do that and uh, it, it's it's a little easier now we're five years in we've done five transactions we've had some pretty good success uh, and you know we're, we're no longer a couple of investment bankers we're we're guys that have uh, spent time you know doing this and and being in the market and uh, and having some successes so it's 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 quite a bit easier now although it's still not you know it's still not completely easy. Um, you know, every deal has to stand on its own. Um, but I think the, the benefit of not having a, a fund is, you know, you're never, uh, you, you, when you have your deal and you present it to investors, they can say yay or nay, right? If they don't like the deal, they don't have to participate in it. And if they do like it, they, they get to participate in it. And there's no discussion down the road about, well, you know, why did you guys get into this company or that company? You know, this is not what I thought you guys were doing. Um, you know, each investor is involved completely in the decision making uh, and whether or not they want to enter the deal. So, you know, we we feel like we've got really good support heading heading into close and post close because that investor base is super supportive of that deal. So, yeah, it, it, it feels like it makes for you know, it makes for better better investments. I think. Um, and are you seeing Mark more more people like you out there as as time has evolved? Like, have you you know seeing the marketplace has has grown in terms of the type of uh, yeah. capital that you bring and the in the type of fund that you are? Yeah, I, I think there are more participants entering the market. Um, and when I say market, I I guess I'm referring to the lower middle market, right? So that that smaller size company that would be off the radar of typical, you know, institutionalized capital out there. So I, I feel like there's more, more and more folks of varying, varying backgrounds, whether they've been in private equity or not, or they've been operators or they've been bankers or they've been, you know, what, what have you hedge fund people, whatever. Uh, it feels like more and more folks are getting into it. Um, and, um, 
yeah, there is a bit more traffic out there for sure versus you know even four or five years ago when we got started it feels like there's more folks out there Mark, I have a last question for you. You know, in terms of Argyle's success and you think about where you want to go, I mean, you've done five deals. You, you know, you've developed a market presence. Where, where, where do you want to take Argyle now? Do you keep going on this model? Do you move towards a committed capital fund? Do you have, where, what's your sense of, you know, if you have to do a, a crystal ball in the future, where, where would you see Argyle in yourself in five years, given what you've created here? You know, that's a, that's a question we ask ourselves quite quite often. And, uh, it, uh, you know, I think, I think we're going to keep doing what we're doing, uh, right now. It, uh, it, it, in a way, as I, as I've just sort of laid out, it creates a lot of discipline for us, right? We don't have a pool of money that needs to be deployed, quote unquote, we're not deployers of capital. Um, we're, you know, we, we like to think of ourselves more as, you know, true investors. So, you know, if we, do, we don't need to do another deal because we have a, a whole pool of capital. Um, so, you know, we're very selective in what we do and we're very involved in, in what we do. And we're, we're a lot more hands-on than, than typical, um, you know, larger institution, uh, institutionalized funds. Uh, we're much more hands-on. So, I think, you know, what we're going to, what we're going to want to do is just continue, you know, down the path that we're down, uh, continue to find uh, good companies that have good values and uh, and partner with them. And uh, and if that leads to you know something more institutionalized down the road, then perhaps. But that's not uh, that's not something we're you know going to put pause on on the portfolio and what we're doing to go out and create a fund. I don't think that's I don't think that's the the near term anyway. Well, Mark, I want to say thank you for joining us today, uh, Mark McPherson. Uh, and the co-founders and a partner at Argo Capital Partners. Uh, Mark, thank you. Appreciate your insight uh, and you know, good luck with you and the fund. It, uh, you've obviously accomplished some great things and uh, great things for you and, uh, and Argo for the future. Thanks a lot, Mario. Thanks for having me.